In the last video, we reformulated the Schrodinger equation for our scattering problem and arrived at this new form over here where uh, u of r was related to the potential energy like so. And we said that the general form of the, the solution to this equation is given by this integral equation over here, assuming that we know what this function g is. Uh, this is called the Green's functions because it's the response of the system to uh, an impulse, uh, an impulse stimulus. So uh, the response to a delta function. More specifically, uh, this function g satisfies this differential equation. So in this video, we're going to uh, derive sort of uh, a form for this function g. So to do that, we first look at uh, the case where uh, at the homogeneous case, so when r is not equal to zero. In that case, the delta function is zero. And the general solution is the superposition of uh, spherical waves of in incoming and outgoing spherical waves. Now for r is equal to zero, this delta function blows up and we can, in that case, we would have to formally solve this differential equation by uh, looking at the continuity of uh, the Green's functions for uh, our particular problem. Instead of doing that, we're going to uh, use the fact that the Laplacian of one over R is equal to minus four pi delta function of R, which you can think of it as uh, remedying the paradox of uh, having uh, a specific flux from a point source in electromagnetism. In that case, we see that just uh, modifying our solution for the homogeneous case slightly will allow us to solve uh, or to find the form for the general differential equation. Okay, in this way, uh, you can see that as R tends to zero, the complex exponentials will tend to one because only the cosine term will contribute. And then we have the ablation of our Green's functions uh, goes as the delta function that we, we needed to have in our equation. Okay, so this is the general form of the Green's functions, uh, g of r. In our general solution, we have uh, g of r displaced to some point r prime. So we can modify that just by displacing our own solution. So here we're interested in the magnitude of R. So we're going to replace that by the magnitude 
of the difference between these two position vectors. Now we can get rid of one of these terms by recalling the general form of our stationary scattering states and noticing that we don't have any terms that look like this. There's no terms with an e to the minus i kr. So on physical grounds, we can set b equals to zero so that, uh, so this is because of the form of our stationary scattering states, which represent the expected form of our solution. Okay, and just for convenience, because it's going to be multiplying with some other factors and we're not really concerning ourselves with normalization, we're going to set A equals to one. So that the Green's function that we were looking for in our integral equation has the following form. An important thing to notice here is this dependence on R prime that is going to be our variable, our variables of integration. So we're integrating with respect to the prime coordinates. And that'll be important for us uh, in the next video when we look at our solution very far away from the range of the potential uh, and try to match our integral solution to our expected uh, asymptotic solution of the stationary scattering states that we've been uh, working from.